said no. <laughs> Good evening, and um, this is a cooking show-ish, I guess. Uh, we're going to make what, camera lady? I don't know, yakisoba. Yakisoba-ish. Um, this is inspired by army yakisoba, but then, you know, that's kind of plain and dry. Um, now, my, my wife went out, and she bought this beautiful brand new red onion and a brand new beautiful green pepper and i'm like whoa 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 that's not how i roll the whole point is to use up stuff you had in the fridge so take a look down yeah this is not bad yet some of you out there i don't know maybe like i wouldn't trust that we're gonna cook it anyway so we got a little bit of leftover onion there a little bit of left onion there we've got an old starting to dry out yellow pepper green pepper red pepper we're just gonna chop them all up so we're gonna start with the onions so we can get them started in some oil and I just use regular olive oil. You can use your canola or, you know, extra virgin or whatever kind of crazy oil you want to use. That's just fine. We like regular. I think that's cheaper. I don't know. What, what do we use? What is this? We use uh, extra virgin. Extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And I don't even know if that's the right kind of thing. I'm not a cook. But we're going to go ahead and get some of this started in our walk that is a uh <clears throat> a steel walk over here camera lady i can see it oh you really you can see all it that's cool yes see i get i get like i don't know camera ladies you're not looking what i'm doing but you know gotta have some trust i guess that, uh, that mean my knife's not sharp if i can't cut through the hide or you just flip it over and cut through it that way all this stuff off of here. Don't go too fast or I'll cut myself. <sighs> anyway, I said I was going to get the onions started. So let's do that. And any more onions than that? And I, you can shift the camera though. Um, that should be enough oil. Back over here. You know what? We're going to put this whole piece of onion in there. Does that make the camera lady happy? Um, for those of you that don't know the camera lady, my wife, uh, she is an onion. I'll tell you what, she's like Shrek, but prettier, you know. So we're just gonna cut this whole thing up here. You can tell I have no skill whatsoever. I've got one of those bigger, like, cleaver, big old knives I like to just, like, hack with. But I think that's dirty right now. Alright. Is that diced to your liking? Looks good. Looks good? Okay. This is, camera ladies, is, it, is this your number one favorite that I make? Mm, maybe. I think, oh, onion down! <clears throat> Um, you can see all the ingredients we got. We got cream of mushroom ready to go. We've got some some noodles of your choice ready to go. We got water ready to start boiling when we get to that point. And you went with the uh, the whole grain this time. Yep. We'll see how it goes. We, we have done that before. It's fine. Mm -hmm. We also use veggie spaghetti, and the kids don't even tell the difference. Really? I guess I don't remember that. Well, I think you were gone, and Erica bought it. Oh. Man, that is a bad knife. That's why I like the serrated edges. Like, you just get a little movement, and they slice right up. Now, when I do toss these in, I'm not going to put them all in. I will probably, what, half, and then save half of them so they're not really cooked. Mm. Isn't that what we usually do, Mama? Yeah. Usually it's sometimes crunchy. Well, even <laughs> this, this yellow one's beyond crunch. So we'll want to make sure we get all the yellow ones cooked. Because they ain't crunchy anymore anyway. But the green peppers are still crunchy. Uh, also, sometimes we do like green beans, um, 
and other, you know, we can throw peas in if you want to do that. So, all right, is this thing making any noise at all? And sometimes what I'll do too, instead of using oil, I'll use bacon grease, but you can see my bacon grease jar is no. sadly empty. There's like a smidge left in there. I guess we could use that up. I love using bacon grease for pretty much everything. Get that heat just up a little bit and we'll start to get our eyes burning and the sound of sizzle. Use butter if you want to use butter. And now we wait for a moment. Now where's the where's the chicken? In the fridge. The secret ingredient. So we're gonna get the onions going, and then we're gonna throw chicken right on top of it. Uh, right. Whoa! We got food flying. So we got what boneless tenderloins? And that's what I usually get. Now we but but. We have used um, anything from venison to uh, ground beef. Um, pork works real well because it's you know kind of a whitish meat too. Um, man, this knife is really not sharp. So anyway, just throw it right on top of those onions, and then another thing we didn't get out. It's going to be some soy sauce and Worcestershire sure, sure sauce, Cheshire mm. sauce. I forget how many Cheshire's there are in Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? Is that it? Just Worcestershire? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me get this in the trash. You can take a look at that. It's chicken! It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, get that going. Get those two magic ingredients. Uh, Worship sure. And soy. And you just like a little spritz, right? Yep. <laughs> Oops, I forgot to shake this one. I think it's more important to shake the Worcestershire show than the soy. And you know, it looks like a lot, but believe it or not, the wife actually puts more on when we're, yep. when we're done. I never have too much. <sighs> and then we'll probably use a little garlic powder. I usually use a little bit of oregano, and very important is the cumin and the curry. Those are like a couple of the top two important ingredients. So, we got this bubbling over here. And uh, one last secret ingredient is some sort of dark beer. So... <laughs> so now we don't normally splurge this stuff is expensive it's really good if you've never had it um kentucky bourbon barrel ale i do like it but it's a little expensive for my taste but it's good it's really good i forget if it's a twist off it is not all the fancy beers are you need a pop top of some sort So now it's really important that you do this first. Just to make sure it hasn't gone bad. Whoa! That's, that's, <laughs> that's awesome! You know, you can't really script that stuff. Not that I would script anything. But I like using dark beer for a couple of my recipes, actually. There we go. All right, so we don't have to leave this recording the entire time. What do you think? Um, is there anything that we need to, to include before we just let the cook? Because really all we're doing now is letting the chicken cook. Yes. Right? 
um, in that marinate, whatever conglomeration that mm -hmm. is. So I'll let that sit for five minutes. I'll flip it, do another five, and I'll, then I'll just chop, chop them up and make sure they're cooked. Um, and then we'll add some other ingredients. So if you want to go ahead and pause it. So this is actually a redo of um, when we did, what, six months ago? Maybe. Five, six months ago. And there were three different um, videos because we kept like having to stop the video and I didn't have software to, to put them together. We have that now. And another reason for the redo is I wasn't particularly kind to the camera lady. And I'm trying to clean up my act. So um, what I'm going to do right now, can you see in there? Um, I'm going to I'm gonna throw some, I, I know I said I was going to flip it and let it cook all the way through. I forget that sometimes what I like to do is I'll, I'll get it so it's at least white, you know, cooked on one side. And then what I like to do is add some of the ingredients before it's fully cooked. <clears throat> so you can see it's cooked, you know, a little bit, maybe eighth of an inch into it on one side. And uh, I like to add some of those ingredients. Now, one of them is actually honey. Gives it a little bit of sweetness and it helps some of the ingredients like the onions to caramelize and i actually am doing this a little late um i often do that before i add the uh, soy sauce and the worcestershire sauce and the beer um because it caramelizes better but it's still fine we'll still give it the sweetness it probably won't caramelize as well and then i also will add the curry just a good shake all over it and I, I'm sorry if it's irritating the heck out of some of the OCD folks out there that I'm not, like, giving measurements. Wow, it's a lot of cumin. But you know what? We usually add more later anyway. That is a different style container or shaker on the head of that. But I think it's still going to be a good amount. Did I already do oregano? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I love oregano. Of the course, you could... Or two. A lot of people like to add that at the end so the flavor isn't, like, mixed in. It, you know, stands out more on its own. Um... But anyway, I just wanted to show you that real quick before we pause it again. Did you to... add garlic? No. Um, do you want me to add that now? Mm -hmm. We can. We can never have too much garlic. Um, and, and then we usually hold off on the salt and pepper until it's actually on the plate. Because some people like different amounts of salt and pepper. We've got, uh, we got a sister and sister-in-law that, um, that thinks that bread is too salty. So... And I mean like store-bought, uh, store-bought like wheat bread. Somehow that's salty. I don't know. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> Can't really shake it her head, no. So that actually looks better already. Kind of dresses it up with some, some powders and some oregano and whatnot. Um, I, I don't get too fancy, but I do like some seasonings on there. So we'll go ahead and pause it and we'll come back uh, when the chicken is cooked. <laughs> so... Um, I like using a wok. Um, I like the fact that you can, especially like with certain meats that you want to slow cook, like venison, not so much with chicken, but you can rotate the meats up to the side. So if, if, if you're, you know, in the middle and they're cooking, you can put them up on the side where they're just kept warm and you rotate in your meats um, that you want to, you know, be exposed to the, the heat. And then ones up on the sides are just kind of just chilling out until it's their turn. Um... You can do this meal in a regular large skillet. Uh, it, it's it's all what you want to do. We've we've done it multiple ways at this point. What do you think, camera lady? What's what what's the drawback that you? What's the reason you don't like the wok? The cleaning process and the oiling of the wok. Now, what's so hard about that? I just like to wash it and put it away. I don't. And you. And what it? happens to the wok? The steel wok. If you just wash it and put it away. It gets gross looking. It starts to rust, right? So the proper way to maintain one of these is actually just, to, depending on what you're cooking, you can actually wipe it out, throw a little oil on it, heat it, and then wipe it out, and you're done. You leave an oil film on it. Um, but if you if it's gross and stuff's stuck on it, you want to wash it and use dishwashing liquid, it's going to pull all the, the oils out, all the grease, whatever, out of the, the steel. So... There's nothing left to protect it, and it's going to rust. So you'd want to, after doing that, you'd want to apply a thin coat of some sort of an oil 
um, and, and then you can store it that way. And that way, next time you want to cook with it, you just pull it off, it's ready to go. So um, anyway, so I've rotated my chicken in, and you can see I haven't intentionally moved any onions. The only onions that have moved are the ones that have moved because I'm moving the chicken. Uh, I like my onions, and I'm not an, uh, an onion aficionado like the camera lady, but I like a varying degree of, of cookedness on the onions. I like some of them really cooked, and I like some of them barely cooked at all. I like the variation, but uh, what do you think, camera lady? I like them always. You just like onions. Yes. So, so you actually like this method too, then, because you get a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. right? So, the chicken is almost cooked. Um, at this point, I'm getting close to adding the cream, um, the the cream of mushroom. I like to use cream of mushroom. There's another dish I actually like to use: cream of mushroom and cream of celery. It's on YouTube already. It's the um, pork chop bake, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Check that out if you like this sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the water going because we'll need those noodles cooked. I prefer fettuccine. And I told, I, I put it in the text message, I said fettuccine. And so why did you buy that one? We'll see how it tastes with it. Just trying something new? Yes. Okay, I think we might have had that before. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, per, I do prefer, um, I don't know what it is. It's just the texture, that, that little bit wider noodle, I prefer. Um, you could do it with anything. You do it with those little swirly egg noodles. You could do it with macaroni. Elbow, you could do bow it with bow tie. And we've tried a bunch of them. Personally, I like the fettuccine the best. Um, I'm not picky. I do like some some angel hair noodles. I'm not a fan of the too don't cooked think it would too go, fast. Yeah, it would. I don't think it'd go well with this. And now, camera lady, Ms. Handyish, uh, you like this for leftovers. Mm -hmm. You prefer it when I make too much. And a lot of the cream in it. And because of that, I usually try to cook the noodles almost. Like it's, what do they call it, El, Don, El Dente, Dante? They're still a little hard. Dante's Inferno, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're still a little bit, they're not fully cooked. That way when you reheat it as leftovers, it's not completely just soggy and mushy and gross. So, all right, so we've got our water starting to go. And, <laughs> oh, look what I'm doing. You're pulling I, a I am pulling a camera lady. If you want the water to boil, you have to turn it up to high. You pulled uh, me. I did. You drive me nuts with that. It's so funny too, because I'll come in. I'm like, "Are you trying to boil the water? You might want to like turn it up. Take five hours to boil the water." So um, it's called slow cooking the water. Slow cooking the water. So you didn't want to burn it, right? You don't want to burn that water. No. So we've got our water warming up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in our cream of mushroom. And you really like the cream of mushroom with what in it? The roasted garlic, but I didn't see any. Okay. And it has an extra garlic. That's been the like a, a theme lately with a lot of my YouTube videos, even even like the home improvement stuff. Like, I'll go in and there's just supply shortages. So you end up having to try new things, not by choice, but because you have to. And that's kind of fun, I guess. I guess. Mm. You know, I mean, you're either going to complain about it or you say, all right, we're trying something new. Um, do, 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 give me a spoon. Now we have tried this with one small can and the Not camera enough. lady and our children just thought it was too dry. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of them it. did like it. No, well, well, especially when you reheat it though. It's, a couple of them liked enough. it with less cream. And then they got used to it and they're like, okay. Well, so you just don't put enough of the <clears throat> topping on. Well, sure. Um, but we've decided that this this 10.5 ounce of small cans, two of them does well. Uh, I'm using a pound of noodles, and we're using how much chicken was that? Do you More remember? than we usually do. Well, you guys see how you know it's what we usually do. That doesn't answer my question. I already threw the packaging away. So. Well, we usually we use half of that pack. That was probably a pound, pound and a half of chicken. Maybe. Um, so it it does pretty well with that amount. Do -do. Don't turn your back to your audience, future YouTubers out there. You're supposed to, to not do that.
Look at that technique. Did you see the, the can spin? Yeah. Look, look, look. I'll do it again. What? Yes, very nice. Every professional cook out there is like he's doing everything wrong. The point of this it <laughs> is actually to show that like anybody can cook. Even Mr. Handyish can cook. Uh, it, remember the ish part. Cook ish. Um, but nobody has died from consuming my food yet, right? No, Never, no. we're all still here. <laughs> and, and some of them actually like it. Um, so let's just go ahead and... Wait, which, which is my favorite? We like the... I like my personal favorite. Now we won't serve with this. I like we serve this with the whatever this is called spaghetti scooper. The the claw scooper, and then oh, that reminds me of that Jim Jim Carrey movie, Liar Liar, was like the claw. Remember that? Yes. Um, but this is my favorite spatula. You gotta mm -hmm. pronounce it like SpongeBob, um, because you can chop with it. It's not super flexible, and it's not. You know, like, oh, it's too small for certain things. Eh, whatever. I use it for just about everything. It's my favorite spatula. That's why I really feel like SpongeBob about it. Because he gets kind of... Isn't he kind of attached to his spatula? Yes. Yeah, there was a whole episode of SpongeBob about his spatula. Like he lost it or broke it or something. I can't remember. And when you're pushing through the chicken, you know, you can kind of feel... If it's cooked or not. If it pushes through easier, if it's kind of gummy, uh, you'll know if it's cooked or not. But I'm going to go ahead and just woo, make sure I'm still centered on the burner. I just kind of, that's the first time I'm intentionally moving everything. So those onions, some of them I've been on the bottom the whole time. And we just kind of stir it in. And it'll get stirred up more later, so I'm not worried about doing too much. At this time, I'm also, while we're waiting for our water to boil, I'm also going to add most of our vegetables. So, as I was mentioning earlier, these are kind of not crunchy anymore. So, we're going to put all those in. Use them up. The red onions, you know what? I'm going to use all those, too, because that one was starting to get there. And then I'm going to put half of the green ones in. And we'll throw the other half. Not, there's really not many of them on there. Oh my gosh, look at the color. I love the color. <clears throat> and some folks might prefer to leave those till the end and just sprinkle them on uncooked. And that would really maximize the color, like for presentation value or mm -hmm. something. And, um, you know, I'm not really concerned with that. But folks that are, you know, putting on a, a dinner or something, maybe you're uh, um, a bachelor or a bachelorette that's cooking dinner for a potential significant other or somebody you've been seeing you on a special dinner you know you can pretend you can cook like i pretend that i can cook mm -hmm. and um sprinkle some of that on top it'll be fresh and crunchy and i think it's good anyway so we've got that and make sure i'm still centered on the burner and we'll let that just kind of heat and cook and let all the flavors simmer together i'm gonna smell it smells kind of bland it usually does and then we can add seasonings to taste. But man, when it's done, honey, what do you think of this dish? I mean, deep down in your soul, what do you really think of this dish? It's tell, good. tell everybody. It's good. It's fabulous. <laughs> what? Okay, for everybody out there, the normal response to what do you think is, eh, or it's fine. Or, I did this amazing thing I'm super proud of, and I'm like, what do you think, honey? It's She's okay. Like, yes, it's okay. It's fine. So for her to actually step it up and say fabulous, uh, let me put it another way. Fed, how long do the leftovers last? Two days tops. Even if there's a lot, right? Yeah. I, I mean, you will eat two to three servings in a sitting. Yes. <laughs> she loves this stuff. So, um, anyway, I think my heat might be a little high now, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that down a little. More, not quite to a simmer, but I don't, <laughs> I don't need this stuff, like, catching fire here. Let that simmer. Above simmer. I just said it's not a simmer, and then I said simmer. Whatever. Precision of language clearly is not my thing when it comes to cooking. So, um, 
Another pet peeve of mine is boiling water without the top on the pot. Who so, does that? I, I don't know. Maybe, camera lady. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> trap the heat in there. It will boil faster, I swear, especially if you have it on high. Uh, Not on medium? High, with the, the top on, it will boil faster. Now, some people will put some salt um, in there, you know, whatever. Uh, oh, while we're talking about salt, this is standard table salt, sodium chloride, okay? This, I, I only mention it because there's maybe one or two people out there, if I mention this and you've never heard of it, um, if somebody in your, your family or you can't have like you need to reduce your sodium. This is new salt. It's potassium chloride. It's still salt. It, it has, I guess, what I would consider to be more like a metallic flavor to it, but you get used to it actually pretty quick. You, it still gives you that salty satisfaction. It's still salt. It's just not sodium chloride. It's potassium chloride instead. And, and you know, uh, from what I've read, the little bit of reading I've done, you use a little bit less of it to get that same saltiness. And you still want to check with the doctor depending on what your limitations and what you're uh, allowed to have or not to have. Because some people can't have more potassium. Some people need that extra potassium and this is like a twofer, right? So like I'm healthy other than blood pressure. Um, so for me, having a little extra potassium uh, is, is good. So uh, just throwing that little tidbit in there too. Camera lady's giving me a look. <laughs> All right. I think we'll pause it until I add until the water boils. Go on. Mm -hmm. So I had to turn this down again because you know, when you when you scrape the bottom, you shouldn't hear like sizzling when you're just trying to simmer. Because at this point, I'm just trying to simmer. Everything in here is cooked. I'm gonna turn it down just a little, a little bit more, all the way down to simmer. And you can see my water's boiling. Not careful to boil over. Woo! I always get a couple that sneak out on me. Oh, well. <coughs> so we'll get that boiling, and, and I guess we can have a little more conversation. Um, substituting different greens. We talked about the meats. Did we mention the uh, doing green beans yes. instead? Green beans is a really good option. I just feel like for, for us, we, we've done that before, and I like the peppers. What do you think? Yeah. Are the, don't good. the peppers just have more, just more flavor, right? More pop. Well, yeah, you got the different ones that have different flavors. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got some fresh green beans out of the garden, though, mm -hmm. you can chop those up to whatever length you like and throw mm -hmm. those in there. Another thing I was thinking about during the break was... Um, the chicken or whatever meat mm -hmm. you have, um, you, you could leave that whole. Mm -hmm. You know, you could you, you know you could serve it that way, and you know because some people like to cut up their cut up their food, so you know there's there's that too I guess. So I got that boiling real. Where's my fork? There's my fork. Make sure I don't get stuck on the bottom. This obviously this part's for folks that don't know how to boil noodles. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you, right? I hope you're laughing on the other side. Like, I have no idea how to cook noodles. Um, you just boil water and put them in like that. It's pretty sweet. Um, what else? I'm just wasting time here. We're, we're cooking noodles. This is almost like the equivalent of watching grass grow or watching paint dry. Probably need to get the vent on. So I don't just like destroy my cabinets there. Emily, you're not holding up your end of the conversation here. No. <laughs> no. All right. Um, we'll pause it. We'll come back in a couple minutes with the noodles. And then we're just going to mix it, and then it's going to be done. So, But we'll, we'll still show that so you can see kind of what it looks like. And uh, that's it. Okay, too close. <laughs> Is it going? Yes. All right. So I called camera lady back. She's like, all right, and these little thin spaghetti noodles cook down a lot faster than the standard ones or the fettuccine I usually use. So just, you know, be aware of that. Sorry to turn it off. Um, I did want to mention my personal favorite yakisoba I ever made. I actually did diced, like, quarter-inch cubed 
um, red potatoes too. Do you remember that? And I really like that, but I like potatoes a lot. So you can throw, get creative. I mean, it is what whatever you want to make it. Uh, let me go get the strainer. I should have had that out already. Because they're just crammed in here. Oh my goodness. Get it. Ah, there we go. All right. So, get my iced tea container out of here rags out of there. Good to have a clean sink. And then I also like to have something down in the bottom so that this doesn't actually like sit in the bottom because if you dump too fast mm -hmm. the water level will come back up and it's almost like backwash from your plumbing. So you don't, I don't want, I don't think anybody wants backwash from their plumbing. So I put a couple things in there usually to make sure that uh, my noodles don't get stuff regurgitated ooh, back on them. So let's go ahead and rinse this off. We're just dumping water in the sink since the camera lady is not watching over here. Everybody Super knows. Super highly technical. You just like, just dump it in there. Yeah. Um, now, would you rather me mix it in that or mix it in this? Just put it back in. Back put in the this. whole strainer on top. Okay. Yeah. Leave it up to you since you're going to be the one cleaning. See, now, I'm a wonderful husband, but I'm not that wonderful. I, if I you do the cooking... Usually, I don't also do the cleaning. And that's really unfair because when camera lady cooks, she usually also cleans. But, I guess, I don't know, she likes the meal, so beggars can't be choosers, right, camera lady? Mm. <laughs> oh, it all works out in the end, right? Mm -hmm. I get some other work done. It's okay. We're a team. I do like... Cleaning sometimes. I do like our new dishwasher, our new countertop dishwasher. Look See other, other videos. See other videos. Yes, you were thinking what I was thinking. You, you know, you've got to have those shameless plugs for your other YouTube videos. Um, you know, we don't have room for. We didn't. We didn't design this kitchen to have a dishwasher, so we have a countertop dishwasher, and it's awesome. It's right there. Uh oh. There we go. Alright. Turn that off. Make sure I don't drop this piece of plastic. And then becomes the highly technical part, thank you very much, of just, you know, mixing it in. How's that look, Cameron? Mm hmm. Oh, so creamy. So good. And at this point, right now, we, it's kind of a sad amount, though. Like, if we had more uh, raw, uncooked goodness of vegetables. Of course, I got a whole one over there. I could chop up, but at this point, you'd mix that in. And then you serve it up. Would you like a plate? Sure. Sure. Should we use the plastiware? <laughs> the paperware or the only kind of plate that we have that's like a real plate maybe it will be fancy fancy like <laughs> look at that that's a nice big plate mm -hmm. of food right there okay. now you're gonna want salt a little bit you're gonna want pepper mm -hmm. i know my camera lady and you're probably gonna want worser a sauce. little bit more Am I right or am I right? Looks good. Bon appetit. <laughs> Have a good one. Subscribe if you like this. I'll try to do a couple more cooking ones at some point. And uh, have a good day.